Well, hello there. Jackie Holland here in Sherman, Texas. I'm with Whosoever Will Outreach Ministries, a ministry to hurting people from the jailhouse to the penthouse. We have church status, so we're basically a outreach ministry church to the unchurched or people who just maybe you're in between churches or maybe you're very active in church and you just want to hear me more and you feel like the Lord is going to speak through me and I believe he's going to too. In fact, I feel it very much so and that's why I want to get right into what I'm going to say today because I know you don't have a lot of time and people people don't people don't but uh, there's always word for a, a word from God a word from God instead of running around seeking a word to get a, some individual to tell you you know everything's going to be beautiful and you're going to get rich and and uh, you're going to meet somebody or some big doors going to open. Go into the Word of God and let the Word speak to you. The Word doesn't return void. So I'm reading out of chapter 8, and the other day I, I, I spoke about this, but it starts with a chapter 8. There's, there no for, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, those that walk after uh, in the Spirit and not in the flesh. Uh, I, I made some highlights here, so I just want to... Uh, so we are saved by knowing the commandments of God, this living Bible. We are saved by knowing that we are, we are not, go back, we are not saved by knowing the commandments of God because we cannot and do not keep them. But God put in effect a different plan. I love this, a different plan to save us. He sent his own son in a human body like ours, and now get this, because some people say, "Well, Jesus could have sinned, and he 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 didn't have a he didn't have a sinless body." But right here, it says, "And he sent his own son in a human body, like ours, except that ours are sinful." Jesus was not sinful. <laughs> no, no, he was sinless, and he destroyed the sin's control over us. By giving himself as a sacrifice for our sins. So now we can obey God's laws if we follow after the Holy Spirit. And we no longer obey the old evil nature. You know, the, the natural man wants the things of the flesh. The spiritual man, the new man that God puts in our heart, wants the things of the Spirit. And so we sometimes we want to do something and it seems like we fall back. Or we get, But I just encourage you, get up, get up, get up, and go forward, and don't fall backwards. Follow, following after the Holy Spirit leads to life and peace, but following after the old nature leads to death because the old sinful nature within us is against God. It never did obey God and never will. That's why those who are still under the control of the old sinful selves, bent on following their own lusts and desires, can never please God. People are trying to please God and they're living for the devil. They're doing their own thing, but yet they're throwing their tithes or their, their, their good deeds or various things, you know, to God and thinking, okay, well, that's going to cover up for them. We don't cover up our sins. God sees and knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart. But you are controlled by your nature if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that if any of you doesn't have the Spirit of God living in you, you're not a Christian. If you don't have the Spirit of God living in you, you're not a Christian. Even though Christ lives within you, your body will die because of sin and your spirit will live for Christ has pardoned it. Or possibly, but the Holy Spirit who lives in you will give you life. For he has already given you righteousness. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So we have, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because of what Jesus did for us on the cross because of our faith in him and what he did. We, by faith, we believe. We believe and accept and receive Jesus as Lord, Savior, Master, Friend, and uh, our Lord. And if the Spirit of God who raised up Jesus from the dead lives in you, he will make your dying bodies live again. Now that's good news, isn't it? So that means you're not going to just lay there and just disappear or come back as a dog or something or a queen or something else. No, this is it. This is it. 
So make it count. That's all I can say. And if the Spirit of God who raised up Jesus from the dead lives in you, he will make your dying bodies live again after you die by means of this same Holy Spirit that lives within you. You have no obligations whatsoever to your old sinful nature. For if you keep on following it, you will perish. But it, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can crush it and you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So we should behave every, in every way God like God's own children, calling to Him, Father, Father. For this Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we really are God's children. And since we are His children, we share His treasures. Hmm. For all God gives to His Son Jesus is now ours also. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Suffering is, just not, is an unpleasant topic, and people don't really like to hear about suffering, and we sure don't enjoy suffering. On the other hand, through suffering, we've all, we've all suffered in, in ways at different, different times. And different, uh, you know, God knows how much each, each of us can bear, and he, we have different trials and troubles that we go through. But suffering, but you've suffered. You've suffered loss, you've suffered pain, you've suffered. But it said, but Jesus suffered. Yet, what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that he's going to give us later on. For all creation is waiting. I love this. All creation is waiting patiently and hopefully for that future day when God will resurrect his children. Literally resurrect his children. For on that day... Thorns and thistles, sin, death, and decay, these things that overcame the world against its will of God's command will all disappear. And the world around us will share in the glorious freedom from sin. For we know that even in these things, even in nature, and, and this is a living Bible, I'm saying, but I thought I couldn't help but, but see this. Even the, li the things of nature like animals and plants suffer in sickness and death and as they await the great event the whole creation has been groaning in travail together until now and even we christians even we have the holy spirit within us as a foretaste of his glory also we groan to be released from pain and suffering we too are waiting anxiously for that day when god will give us our full rights in his as his children including our new bodies for this for that fat promised time bodies that will never be sick and will never die we are saved by trusting and trusting means looking forward to getting something we do not yet have a man who already has something doesn't need to hope and trust that he's going to get it because he's already, and in the same way, by our faith, the Holy Spirit helps us with our problems and prayers, and, and we don't even know what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays and makes the intercession for us. Jesus sat at the right hand of the Father interceding for us right now, pleading our case. I love that. Oh, he's pleading for us. And we know that all that all these things have happened for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Verse 28. For from the very beginning, God decided that those that did come to him, and all along he knew who would, would become like his son, so that his son would be the first. And he called us to come to him. And when he came, he declared us not guilty, filled us with Christ's goodness, gave us right standing, and promised us his glory. If God is on your side, who can be against you? Oh, I, I mean, I should, just go, I, I should go on, but maybe I'll do a little more. Won't he also surely give us everything else? Who dares accuse us? <laughs> Not God. God, he's forgiven us. Who then will condemn us? Will, will Christ? No. For he died for us and he came back to life again for us. And is sitting on the, uh, the right hand of the Father, pleading for us now. Who then can even keep Christ's love from us? When we, love, when we have trouble or calamity, when we are hunted down or destroyed, is it because he doesn't love us anymore? And if we're hungry or peril, perilous or in danger or threatened with death, has God deserted us? No, 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 no. For the scriptures tell us that his 
For his sake, we must be ready to face death. At every moment of the day, we are all like sheep awaiting slaughter. Hmm. But despite all this, there's overwhelming victory in our beloved Christ who loved us enough to die for us. For I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. Not angels, not principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. So, if Christ is for you, who can be against you? So, nothing will ever be able to separate you. Christ died for you. He gave himself for you. He's coming back again. He's pleading your case right now. He, he wants to forgive. He knows who's going to accept him. He knows gonna, who, who's going to reject him. He, he, it's all, he, all know, he knows it. He's God. And so lest you think you're taking God or Jesus unaware and, and, and you're pulling something over him, that, that would be kind of ridiculous. It's childish, really. Either he's God or he's not God. And I say, I agree. The Lord, he is God. Jesus is Lord. And Jesus said, if you want to get to the Father, you have to go through me. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And anybody that wants to get to the Father goes through me. So a lot of people, you know, they're wanting to sidetrack and go to the left or the right or go to a different religion or a different way, a different name. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you can do that. You sure can. We all can. You may think I'm just a, like a fly on a wall. I'm, you'd be like, I, I'm going to swatch you away. Well, you know what? It's still what I believe. I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father but by Him. He said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you would be saved. Listen, you can't serve two masters. We're in a, we're in a difficult place in this world. And there's things that the, the Holy Scriptures teach us. And you cannot change God's laws. Uh, we, even though we're not under the law, the Lord Jesus himself said, really all, all of what the laws basically are summed up into two, which is love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And next, it's love your neighbors yourself. So that means you can love all these people that are even unlovely people and even ungodly people. You love them. You love them. You love them to wholeness sometimes. You love them to sanity, to keep them alive and so they can hold on. You love them to the point that they can get, get cry out for help. You love people. And so wait, I'm just asking the Lord, Lord, teach us how to love like you loved. You, you loved. You loved. You loved sinners. You died for sinners. <laughs> And you didn't expect people to just keep on sinning. You said, take up your cross and follow me. And he said, don't keep doing the same thing you're doing or lest a worse thing will come upon you. So I would just say, suggest that to you. You think, oh, I got, I, okay, I did that. I got that taken care of. You know, I paid for that sin right here on earth. Well, not, not really. I mean, every, we've all sinned. And you're like, little sin, big sin, middle sin. Sin is sin, and it, it, it all has to be paid for. And it all had, and it was only one way to pay for it. It was through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. He can take a harlot, or he can take a president or a king. He can make a beautiful princess, or he can make... A beggar on the street, clean, pure, forgiven, sins washed away, thrown into the sea of forgetfulness, name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. He can take all of those past of all these different types of people and he can give them a new way. Because those ways, even if you're at the highest position in this land, that's nothing. You'll be forgotten, talked bad about, thrown out, pitched out on your head. Huh. Well, that's just the way, that's the nature of the way it is, isn't it? So you need to get just past that and just say, you know what, I, I'm going to stick with the one that, that I know loves me, and his name is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Yes, he does. He loves us. So, you want to say a prayer and just say, 
well, if this is right, if it's all about Jesus and there's no other way, and, and if he actually did pay for my sins, if he actually is God in the, in the flesh, and he's sitting right now in heaven, he hears me, he, he knows my heart, he's in charge of the thunder that you may hear rolling right now, well, God's in control. His voice is like thunder. He can do anything, and he can save anybody. All we have to do is say, I'm sorry, and mean it. Re that's called repent. There's to repent. You're sorry, and you're, with your full intention, you, you don't want to do it. You, you want to not do it again, even if in your flesh says, I want to do something again that's wrong. You, 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 you know in your heart of hearts, I don't want to do that. And you ask God to help you. Lord, help me and take those sins away and take that desire away. Let's pray. You want to? Ask him to come into your heart. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse my heart of all unrighteousness. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, my only hope of a home in heaven. I give you my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me your ways. Guide me, lead me, help me, strengthen me. I, I, I'm yours, but I need help. And I, I don't want to fall. But if I do, Lord, please, God, have mercy. And... Lift me back up and set me on the right path and put good people around. around. And I just pray that in Jesus' name, do you? Say yes, in Jesus' name. I pray that prayer come into my heart and save me. Remember, and the thought came to me as I was praying, bad company corrupts good morals. You hang around bad people, it's going to rub off. You think, oh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change them. Really? You think you're that strong? Maybe. We'll see. It's not hardly worth playing the game, is it? It's like, is it worth joining a club or pact or, or isolate other people just so you can be around the right people so you can be in the right place and get the right job and, and uh, get the, no, it's not worth it. Don't hurt people as you're rising up to your place in life. But remember, Jesus, the last thing he was doing, he's just, he washed the disciples' feet. And Peter was one of the disciples. He said, no, you're not going to wash my feet. Uh-uh. Jesus said, you know, you'll perish if, if I don't. And so he said, well, wash me all over. <laughs> That's what kind of way we feel sometimes, you know. You know, you, you've got, Jesus was showing us and teaching us a giant, humongous, lesson be good to others be kind to others do unto others as you'd have them do unto you show respect show honor show kindness give when when you can it's appropriate you be led by the holy spirit not manipulated but led by the lord and god shows you you can't do everything but you can do some things and with God's help, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. That's what he said. I love you, and I thank you for for just listening. And, and, and I would suggest if, if you enjoyed that, that was, that's in Romans 8. And that's a wonderful, this was the Living Bible, so it was a little different than King James. But, um, but it's, the, it's the Word of God, and the Word doesn't return void. It accomplishes what God wants. So I ask the Lord to bless you real good and touch you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet with healing, grace, mercy, and love. Fill your heart and your mind with the love of God, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Grace, my friend. My name is Jackie Holland. Whosoever will, Outreach Ministries. Dot org, if you want to go to the website, whosoever will, Outreach Ministries. Dot org, all one. Jackie Holland, here in Sherman, Texas. I'd love to hear from you. P.O. Box 57, Sherman, Texas 75091. You can always stop this and listen to it. Look at the, look at the website. But I don't have to hear from you. Tell somebody. You know, I, I mean, I love to hear.
But I, you don't require, I don't require anything from you. I just ask you to just realize who, how much God loves you. And he has a wonderful plan for your life. Yeah, it's Jackie Holland, whosoever will, Outreach Ministries, church. <laughs> Let's have church right where we're at. Recently, biggest church in Dallas, part of it, the historic portion all burned down. That was a church, that was a building, and it was monumental and beautiful, and, and it hurt us to see it in flames. But the church or the believers, that was just a meeting place. It could be rebuilt. Never the same, though. Nothing is ever the same. Even though God did, I did see that he, he, left, he left the pulpit there that had been there for, I don't know, maybe in the 1800s. So there you go. He's God. He can do whatever he wants to. I sure do love you. Have a blessed day.